appreciate everybody being here. Tom, let me just start with you. Why do you think soft landing hopes are still alive? You know, I think that there, there are a couple of factors that really sort of, I think, drive that point home. One, remember those revisions from last week? GDP? Um, yeah, exactly. Well, all of a sudden now, you know, miraculously now there's, you know, $400 billion extra in excess savings, right? So um, not, still the trend is still definitively down. Um, but, uh, you know, that's a very deep pool for the consumer to sort of dip into. Um, wage pressures, yes, they're slowing. Um, but again, it's really easy to make the case that they hang in there. And so the consumer still has this pool. I mean, the pool is, is, is being more restricted or constricting, I should say. Um, but for now, it's, I think, easy to make the case that the it's consumer can the, certainly hang in there. Sort of the Goldman camp, too, but it, w it would hinge on the labor market continuing it, to hang in there, it, right? It, I mean, that, that's why the ADP number, you know, it's a little discomforting. It, it is. I mean, I, I have to be totally honest. I'm not a big fan of the ADP report. Mm -hmm. I just I tend to fade it. Um, uh, you know, as a great example, uh, large companies shed 32,000 jobs um, uh, this month, but they've been shedding jobs like straight through. I mean, when they shed jobs two months ago yeah. um, per ADP, you had a 480,000 printed ADP, right? So it's like uh, uh, there's a lot going on underneath the surface there. But what I would say is, look, job growth is slowing down. I mean, that's not a guess. I mean, I don't know if I would you sort of just lean on ADP in isolation. What I would instead say is, if you just look at the payroll report, you know, every single month for the last year, it's done nothing but slow down. Right, you know, particularly exactly. if you strip out healthcare workers, yeah. which I think is really important. Um, so we're, we're, we're getting there. And, and the risk for us, right, the risk to the soft landing idea is exactly what you highlight. If, if you consider the idea that right now, um, compensation is running at a faster pace than revenue. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not a tenable setup for, um, for corporate earnings. For corporations, yeah. exactly. And, and, and what it could really amount to is a sort of a margin compression story. Mm -hmm. and so if that materializes, I think it's really easy to make the case that you could see companies basically go after labor, which is, would be a classic approach. And it's interesting to hear you look at the stock of savings because Dave is focused on the stock of QE. Well, stock of bonds still on the Fed's balance sheet more broadly, which you think is the reason why the economy hasn't done as poorly as people thought it would by now with all of these rate hikes. Yeah, Kelly, we've, we've chatted about this a lot over the course of the year. I think we've all, you know, throughout this entire post-global financial crisis period, back to 0708, tried to get our head around what QE does, what QT does. Right, it's, does it even work? Yeah, is there and, any and I think what we've all kind of, at least I've come to grips with, and I, I certainly believe, is that it's a much more powerful tool than, um, than maybe many had originally thought. And when mm. we take it away, it's powerful. When we add it in, it's powerful. And the reality is we still have a lot of QE in our system. Why does it matter so much? Because most people would say, OK, even if you're right that it's powerful, all that matters is the flow. So we're not buying bonds anymore. We're selling them. And that's the single biggest reason why rates are suddenly spiking, right? Huge issuance, not a lot of buyers. That's all that matters. But you think the story is more complex. Well, remember, uh, the Fed's balance sheet on the asset side is the bonds, but on the liability side, it's liquidity. It's high-powered money. It's reserves. It's cash. It's the lifeblood of liquidity for the economy. And we have a $8 trillion of that in our system. If we were to take that back to pre-GFC levels and say the balance sheet was the same size as a percentage of the economy in 07, it would only be $1.3 trillion. We have a lot of liquidity in the system. And that sticks with that. That level matters. But more importantly, and I think part of what we've pushed with clients this year is that the Fed's ownership of those bonds, of those $8 trillion of 30-year mortgages and 30-year treasury, some that are trading at 40 cents on the dollar. Exactly. That's it, where the it, losses are. Yeah. It, it insulated the market from a lot of losses. And those losses weren't distributed into the system. And yeah. there were gains. People who locked in low rates benefited. People who didn't uh, did not. And I think we didn't have that offset that we usually do, which is winners and losers when, they're, when rates go up. We had a lot of winners, low coupon mortgages, uh, that were held in the Fed's balance sheet, insulated the street from the losses. And that, Steve, so, so the question has kind of gone back and forth from, is the economy about to weaken or where are all of the blow-ups or... A la 1994, which one's going to be the Orange County? That, get, that was right. mortgages, I think, in that right. case that, yeah. ca that yeah. caught them Inverse up. Inverse IO. But so in just, this case, they're all in the Fed's balance you're, sheet. You're, you're so familiar with this stuff, uh, Kelly. You're talking shorthand. Just so you know, there's two kinds of economists out there. There's stock and flow. Yeah, you're right. Right? There's those who say it's the flow into QE, and those who say, no, it's the amount that the Fed has taken off. That's the stock. And guys in the back, here's a test for you live on national television. <laughs> the chart that you put up about the Fed balance sheet, to really show David's point, please take it back to before 2020. Mm. Okay, because you show it going down, but that's not David's point. David's point is, even after taking a trillion off of it, it remains massive. So I don't know if they can get that done in the I'm back. Sure, I should yeah. have prepared for it. No, but, but again, I should, I, should, I should divine what Zervos is going to say. And he's not even saying we have to go back. It's very important.